shadow football. The only other game so far this season that Chelsea have failed to win was the 2-2 Champions League draw against Real Madrid. And to their credit, it's much harder to play against 12 women than the usual 11, but with the correct amount of players on the opposition side today, Chelsea were utterly dominated, dismantled, and completely taken apart by a clinical Arsenal side who produced their best performance so far this season. So how exactly did Arsenal demolish Chelsea? And is this a worrying sign for Emma Hayes? Right from kickoff, we see... Actually, you know what, let's start a little bit before kickoff. When the teams were named, both lining up in a 4-2-3-1 formation, the area of much debate about who should start was the midfield for both teams. Both managers have been playing Russian roulette with the midfield pairings, with neither really settling down on a combination. A good midfield pairing requires good balance. Two players of different qualities combining together to form the engine of the team in defence and attack. Chelsea went with a dynamic box-to-box midfielder Aaron Cuthbert, and the forward-thinking Sjoka Nuskin. Whilst Arsenal went with the energetic Victoria Pelova and the defensive-minded Lea Valti, this is ultimately where the battle was won for Arsenal, with Emma Hayes getting the balance of her midfield wrong for this game and Eidevold getting it spot on. With Nuskin being the more attacking-minded of the two, Cuthbert was tasked with playing as the holding midfielder. But she just isn't that type of player. Her first instinct is to press the first and second passing options whenever her team loses the ball, which she's very, very good at. She's fantastic at it but she ends up leaving a lot of space behind her. That usually isn't a problem, but she normally has a player like Sophie Ingle behind her, who will occupy the holding midfield spot. But in this game, Cuthbert is the holding midfielder, and when she presses up high, no one is there to protect the back four. Sam Kerr gives the ball away, and Cuthbert is right on cue to put pressure on Kim Little and Leavalti. This is something she does instinctively, but look at where Nuskin is. She's all the way over here, nowhere near her defence. If Ingle was the one partnering Cuthbert, she'd probably take up a position uh, around about here. Ford drives straight through where a defensive midfielder should be, and Marimielda now has to play two roles, as a centre-off and as a holding midfielder since there isn't one, and doesn't know whether to stay put or step out to Ford since she has so many passing options. She did quite well, honestly. She did the best she could to slow Ford down and cut off at least one passing lane. Pelova then picks the ball up, and I want you to take a look at the positions of the three Arsenal players here as the ball goes to Beth Mead. They're all facing this way, which allows them to have a perfect view to watch Beth Mead put this in the back of the net. This happened time and time again throughout the whole game. And before we go any further, this is not a reflection on both Cuthbert and Nuskin not being good players. This is a result of poor team selection. Nuskin and Cuthbert are playing how they normally play, but this is a combination that doesn't work given both of their playing styles. When Fran Kirby came on, Jesse Fleming dropped deeper into the midfield too in place of Nuskin, but that didn't change anything. The balance of the midfield was still off. Here we see Nuskin pressing the only Irish woman made out of adamantium, Katie McCabe, whilst Cuthbert is following her little Scottish teammate around. This drags the Chelsea midfield so incredibly out of shape that a simple ball from Liavalti to Pelova is able to cut through the Chelsea midfield and create a chance that was very well defended by Perisic. Another example here, we see Fleming lose the ball to McCabe, and Cuthbert is once again on hand to put pressure on Pelova, but Fleming is out wide over here. Pelova beats Cuthbert easily, and again, there is no Sophie Ingle, which means there's no holding midfielder at all, so Buchanan, the centre-back, has to step out of line to put pressure on Pelova. She's now drawn out of position in order to be the holding midfielder, which allows Pelova to slot Russo in on goal, only for Berger to bundle her over and concede the penalty, which Alessia Russo calmly puts away. Ooh, what a penalty. Chelsea's midfield pairing didn't work during this game, which is a huge contrast to Arsenal. Lea Valti was always in a good position defensively, and had incredible composure to play her team out of their own half. She stayed back when Arsenal were attacking, and was on hand to reset the attack whenever the ball was played back to her. She was the defensive midfielder that Chelsea really needed. Except they had one on the bench in Sophie Ingle. Her name is Sophie Ingle. Sophie Ingle. Sophie bloody Ingle. Valti and her Arsenal team defended in a very organized manner. They didn't press Chelsea high up. Instead pressing whenever Chelsea entered their half. Essentially, they just said, we're going to sit back, try and find a way through us, and we'll hit you on the counter. Katie McCabe started at right back to deal with the threat of Lauren James. 
and dealt with it so well, Lauren James was so sick of seeing Katie McCabe, she decided to switch over to the other side about a third of the way into the game. Arsenal were very organized, and James could not find any space since they absolutely hounded her whenever she was on the ball. She was then moved to the center where she had more of an impact and was able to find a chance or two, but Arsenal just shut everything down. The only time Arsenal didn't sit back and decided to press up high resulted in Chelsea scoring their only goal of the game. James does well to win the ball, Neve Charles relives her younger years as a winger and dances around two Arsenal players and we are left with Valti and Pelova wildly out of position. Fleming plays the ball to Canada and Canley isn't tight enough to her and allows the shot to go past her and into the back of the net. Arsenal were capable of fixing their own mistake by never pressing high in the game again. Contrast this to Chelsea who did absolutely nothing to change the fact they didn't have a defensive midfielder. Whenever Arsenal lost the ball in the opposition half, they just dropped off and stayed in shape, stayed compact and Chelsea didn't know how to break them down. Chelsea usually press very high whenever they lose the ball in the opposition half, but they didn't do that this time. Under no real pressure, Valti picks up the ball on the left hand side and plays a perfect ball for Alessia Russo to run onto. She manages to open up her body to shoot with the right foot, and what a finish that is. Milda and Carter seem to be occupied by Kim Little, who isn't picked up by Cuthbert, and completely forgot about the striker they should be marking. And this isn't just any striker, it's Alessia bloody Russo. Russo smartly positions herself between the two center halves like any good forward, and I just want to show this finish again. What a goal. I absolutely love Alessia Russo. This was a rather forgettable day for Chelsea players. Johanna Dayton Canada was probably the best player on the park due to her work rate and a very well taken goal. This wasn't the most convincing of performances from Chelsea and Emma Hayes will hope that this was just a one-off. Zesira Musovic and Hannah Hampton must be thinking they deserve a chance in this team at this point due to Berger's below standard performance today. Her decision to rush out to concede the penalty was completely unnecessary. Jess Carter got there ahead of Russo anyways and would have taken the ball away from her. There was no benefit to Berger rushing out and thus sealed the win for the Gunners. It was also her mistake in judging the flight of the ball which gave Amanda Illestead, Sweden's answer to the Eiffel Tower, a header at an open goal from a corner. Now, I love this corner tactic. You just know exactly what they're going to do when they place an in-swinger on corner duty with Amanda Illestead in the middle. This is how she scored 4 goals for Sweden in the World Cup and Jonas Eidevold has now taken that on board as well. They've essentially gone, this is what we're going to do when we have a corner. Good luck stopping it. It just oozes so much confidence. The idea is to have Ilstedt, the tallest player, start around 3 yards from the goal line, with Pilova in front of the goalkeeper to challenge. The ball is swung in, aiming for this sort of area, and Ilstedt will adjust her position to nod the ball home. Berger did actually punch one away a few minutes before, but the difference between that corner and the one that Ilstedt scored from was only about roughly 30 milliseconds. The hang time on Beth Mead's corner was slightly longer than the one from Catley meaning Berger had slightly more time to judge the flight of the ball and punch it away. Catley's corner was whipped in with more pace. Berger decides to come out for it after pushing Pelova out of the way, thinking she's done it 5 minutes ago and she can do it again, which I think is the wrong choice. Had she stayed put, the ball would have ended up nicely in her arms. She misjudges the flight of the ball, and Ilestet just had to rise up and get in the way of the ball, as she so often does for club and country. Chelsea really missed Millie Bright here as her leadership and control of the back four would have been key to preventing some of these goals, especially the third one. They just looked sloppy throughout, constantly giving the ball away in needless situations, and there was a real lack of quality about them in all aspects of the game. Their attack didn't click, and even their set-piece deliveries were far below standard. Hopefully Lauren James can control her emotions and not resort to petulant behaviour like this when she's not having a good game. This was a far cry from the usual brilliance we're so accustomed to from Chelsea and Emma Hayes will hope that this was just one of those days where things just didn't work out for them. On the other hand, this was Arsenal's best performance so far this season. Eidevall hadn't really settled on a starting 11 so far this campaign, but this game showed us that this might be the 11 to go right now. Well, until Miedema and Williamson return to full fitness, then he'll have another headache. Lotta Woodman Moy had a very composed game at the back. She's such an intelligent defender, it's honestly wonderful to watch. Caitlin Ford and Beth Mead absolutely terrorized the Chelsea defense with their direct running and eagerness to get forward and create something. Kim Little was the glue that held everything together and Katie McCabe is just, well, Katie McCabe. The Arsenal player that I want to highlight for this game is Victoria Pelova. 
Paired up with the more defensive-minded Lialotti, Pelova was able to showcase all of her talents. She was positive going forward, always looking to put her teammates into space with her vision and passing. She was tenacious in defense, and was given the freedom to be another creative outlet for the Gunners. She stayed close to Valti to always give her a passing option, and was on hand to create the goal for Beth Mead, and also slide the pass through to Alessia Russo for her to fall over and win the penalty that sealed the game for her team. She kept this up throughout the game, and she was just such a joy to watch in that midfield. She just looks so comfortable in the middle of the park, and is such a key player in their transition from defense to attack. I'm very excited to see how the title race goes. With Chelsea and Arsenal leading the pack, and a pack of Northerners hot on their heels, hopefully Chelsea can put this performance behind them quickly and refine their mojo, and Arsenal can keep up this level of performance for the rest of the season. With Man City and Man United both looking strong as well, this will definitely be a title race we won't be able to keep our eyes off.